Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Steele Arbini, and I'm here to talk about M&A overnight. It's not a dream. It's reality. And I'm joined here by my friend and colleague, Ms. Marta Filippini from Federal Good morning, Mogul everybody. Powertrain, and she is the IS Director. And my name is Steele Arbini, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of SNP. I invite you all to come visit us at booth 971, right as you enter the lunchroom, and come experience many wonderful things that we have there to offer you. But wow, is this an amazing show or what, right? Did everybody have a lot of fun? I really think only the best run could put on such a best run show. To learn so much, the booths are beautiful, the layout is gorgeous, the lighting is wonderful. Really an amazing show, and I mean, amazing congratulations to SAP and all the vendors and exhibitors for putting on such a beautiful show. I think the attendance looks a little light today. I think everybody was at the Howl at the Moon party yesterday, right, Martha? Definitely. <laughs> so they're coming in a little bit late today, but uh, let's get started right away. Martha, can you tell us a little bit about Federal Mogul Powertrain? Of course. So Federal Mogul Powertrain is a division of Federal Mogul. Federal Mogul Powertrain is a global supplier in terms of technologies and components for the auto industry. So we provide mostly engine parts. All what you see under the hood, it's likely something we do. And uh, uh, of course, we provide parts to all the major automakers, but we also have business outside of the auto industry. So we provide uh, uh, parts to the aerospace, railway, and uh, as well as naval industry. Thank you. Good intro. Wow. Amazing line of business, right? Uh, airplanes, automotive, pretty much everything we touch every day. You know, and at SNP, our goal is to make the dream of M&A overnight a reality through intelligent software. We're able to close the gap between business strategy and IT execution. Just to give you an example the, of a reality of an M&A overnight, the largest company split in history, $120 billion company becoming two $60 billion companies, the split of HP was done using this technology. The first wave completed in 36 hours for the largest company split in history. If we could do that for the largest company split, imagine a normal size organization, right? And this all feeds into the topic of transformation. At SNP, we're known as the transformation company. And for us, that's broken into two main categories. Of course, there's business transformation, like mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, carve-outs, restructuring, and then there's technical transformation like cloud migration, OSDB migration, virtualization, S4 HANA adoption. Well, that's kind of both business and technical, but all of those are use cases for transformation. And M&A is certainly a big one, but it's really only just one. And the key takeaway from there is really if you think about transformation at that level, you'll see it never stops. So let's define a little bit more what we mean. Many times we wind up with the zoo, what you see uh, uh, on uh, uh, the left up there. Uh, and it's one of everything. Many organizations have grown over time through, through improperly completed acquisition, bolt on after bolt on after bolt on, and they wind up with the zoo. Is that what you want to move to the cloud? Is that what you want to integrate your next acquisition into? Is that what you want to move to S4? Probably not, right? right? It's unmanageable. Transformation is what can rationalize, standardize, simplify, and consolidate that into what you see on the right through merging, splitting of systems, upgrade, harmonization, getting rid of unused business units, ultimately leading to simplification and retirement. And the benefit of the SNP approach is that at any stage, multiple business transformations are possible at the same time. For example, you could merge multiple systems as part of an acquisition and also remove underperforming or unused business units and uplift the entire result to the cloud in one project with one non-destructive go live of the source. Not possible with any other approach. 
back a little bit more to the M&A story now that you have a little intro of, about S&P. You know, it's a very dangerous business M&A, right? As you can see by some of these metrics, and these are from leading experts in the area, from Deloitte, from Harvard, and uh, uh, from Wharton, that 83% of these acquisitions fail to deliver a competitive advantage. 66% fail to add shareholder value, and actually 60% actually destroy shareholder value. It's an amazing metric of what we're up against when we try to acquire or divest. Basically, more than two-thirds guaranteed to fail. And the number one reason why they fail, because they can't integrate the technology, and it's because of time. If these projects take two years to execute, you're building for a solution from two years past. Any of the business conditions that you thought were available at that time or prevalent at that time have changed, and you're building for something that's already gone. And this is why these acquisitions nearly always fail. Not my numbers, industry standard numbers. So the key, the key to delivering this value and gaining the value out of the acceleration for your more efficient deployment of capital, which is really what M&A is all about, divesting of something underperforming, retaking that capital and using it to buy something to move the organization in a new direction, add a new line of business, and more efficiently unlock that value and redeploy that capital. That's what this type of business transformation is all about. And time is of the essence. Many of our customers have 10 acquisitions to make in a year. How are you going to do that if each one takes two years? You're talking about 20 years just to cycle back from one year of business decision. But given that background, kind of to upset our stomachs a little bit about what a dangerous business this M&A is, let's toss back to Marta and hear from her about some of the recent acquisition that Federal Mogul Powertrain did and what we can learn from that. Marta, what can you tell us about the recent acquisition? So first, uh, I want to open with a positive note. Our, our acquisition was successful. So starting from there. Woo <laughs> um, in 2015, Federal Mogul Powertrain decided to expand our product portfolio by buying a full business unit from another auto supplier, TRW. So we decided to buy their, what was called engine components uh, business unit. They, they are producing valves, uh, engine valves. And uh, so we started the, this process of uh, m and with them. And um, um, I want to tell you a, a funny story uh, still. When we started, uh, when basically the acquisition was publicly announced, our intention to acquire was publicly announced, uh, we were at that point able to dig a little bit deeper in what was the IT landscape. During due diligence, uh, our understanding was probably very high level, so the mindset was they have SIP, we have SIP, so easy peasy, we lift and shift. So that was definitely a big uh, understatement. Um, so when we started understanding a little bit more the context of what we needed to do from an IT standpoint, we discovered that there was complexity. And, and this is where um, we started seeing that maybe imagining a traditional approach uh, in terms of how to deal with the SAP landscapes, uh, trying to re-implement or move with, uh, with just uh, functional and developer work, was possibly not going to work because at that point in time, even if our understanding of the complexity was better, uh, the expectations were set. It's easy, so it needs to be fast, okay? So that's where s and came into play. So we saw that there were limitations on our side as internal IT to manage this, um, uh, all these activities, especially a carve out of, in, of, of an entire piece of business from one of TRW systems, SAP platforms, uh, to bring it into ours. And we approach s and and we ask them, can you help us? What can you do for us in this context? And so that's where they came. They helped us analyzing 
uh, basically the interdependencies in this environment, of course with TRW because the environment was not ours. Um, they helped us and especially they helped us, uh, they helped our business and their business to understand which was exactly the scope that needed to be carved out. And then from there, I can tell you, I mean, we, we started the project. We were given a quite ambitious target, no more than nine months of TSAs. So, you know, the, the initial estimate was we, we need at least one year to do this work. So when we were given nine months, okay, we will work with that. So that's where, I mean, we started and planning was really an important component. Understanding the scope of the carve out with SMP was really an important component. After that, it was execution. And execution was, I would say, fast. It was smooth. Uh, we went through many cycles of testing. So we repeated three times. We tried three times the carve out with, uh, with TRW. There were clearly many elements to consider. It was not just the technical side of the project. Data were not our data, okay? We were working on a TRW system, so we needed audit to be involved. We needed them to validate we were taking only what was relevant to us. We needed our business people to understand that all what was needed for them in order to proceed the business on our side was there. So that initial part was key, and then testing and testing and testing, and then we went live. We went live one month before the end of the nine months. So we used the last month of TSA to get support from TRW, but with the system already moved on our side to close the first month end. So it was, it was mostly business support to make sure all was okay on our side, and that was our go live. And wow. it went well. Thank you for that. An amazing story. Yep, yep. Let's give Martha a round of applause for that. Really a great story. You know, you mentioned the nine-month TSA. That is almost unthinkable, especially for a large organization. Some of the ones we typically see that are not using the accelerated approach that S&P offers is 24 months, 18 months, that, time, that kind of time frame. And sometimes the cost of that could be as much as a million dollars a month, some of those TSAs. So even just to bring it down by that, never mind the speed and agility and freeing up the people from working on that project for two years, just the savings of the TSA is really unthinkable. Had you done a lot of other acquisitions in the past, maybe without uh, S&P technology, and what were some of the differences you saw? Uh, well, we did a, a much smaller acquisition in terms of scope uh, three years prior to this one. Um, we didn't use S&P on our side, so uh -oh. a lot of the work was uh, manual, okay? The scope was definitely smaller. It was only two plants uh, with the TRW acquisition, with, uh, sorry, the, the engine components acquisition. We were talking about 12 plants across the globe. Um, so, you know, but two plants and it took us six months. 12 plants and we took us nine months. So I would say the comparison is, is there. I mean, it was very effective to be able to use a, a tool to help us in the work, and not just doing, let's say, traditional uh, SAP work. Great, good to know, good example, good example. You know, what it boils down to is I think, uh, you know, people want disruptive technology and not disruptive projects, right? And we gotta avoid the disruptive people too because they, 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 they really, uh, cause a problem, yeah. but how do we make this happen? Look, this is a little bit about me, right? You can see my genetic background, you can see where my ancestors came from, you can even see what diseases I may or may not get, and you see one of the first one is macular degeneration, and that's why I squint a lot, but what I'll tell you is, guess what? If you know what you're gonna die from, you're not gonna die from it, right? And that's what this is telling you, all this information to help you guide your life and get the most out of it and make the right decisions before the problem happens. And this is exactly the direction we go with the SNP technology through Crystal Bridge, which I invite you to come to booth 971 to get a preview of. We conduct advanced analytics and scanning 
of the underlying ERP landscape in a pre-project analysis mode, as Martha mentioned, to profile the usage, data, transactions, customizing, configuration, and repository of your system to really understand where those show-stopping risks are. And we use that to then plan the project, right? Interactively, through our graphical software, we can interact with the scan data we collected, select organizational units, plants, profit centers, document types, anything that's in scope for this transformation, even see our predictive analytics explain what the outcome and impact of this transformation is going to be, all before one byte of data has been executed, and really understand what the outcome is going to be. Do your what-if scenarios, what if I change a little bit, pivot one way or the other, how will the impact change? And then author the transformation content to actually execute this. What differentiates SNP, for example, from ETL? With ETL, there's nothing to stop you from inserting the customer data into the vendor master. Because it's just tables, right? It, there's no intelligence there. SNP software is built on context-aware data migration content that is aggregated up to the business level. For example, you talk about a purchase order in SAP. Could be 200 tables at 20 levels deep of hierarchy. There's no document to explain that to you. That's what's built into our software. When you say purchase orders at a certain level, that's all you need to say. The rest is built into the software. And that's where the acceleration comes from. It's intelligent software giving you accelerated outcomes to close that gap. So profile, planning, ultimately to predictive analytics to predict the outcome. Everything from uh, number range collisions, runtime prediction, execution time, storage constraints, HANA sizes, for example, uh, data conflicts are all predicted pre-project to eliminate those show-stopping risks early. And that's really how we're able to get that acceleration. It's through intelligent software. So at the end, we'll adjourn to this little room over here. And if anybody has any questions, please, I invite you all to come over there and have a chat. There's some other uh, SNP representatives in the office. And uh, from this graphic, you can get an understanding of how we conceptualize transformation and software services that can execute it with SNP Crystal Bridge at the core, enabling analysis, modernization, cloudification, all with near zero downtime, transformation like M&A. Uh, and when I say near zero downtime, I mean low single digit hours of downtime for workloads 20 terabytes and plus transforming in that amount of time. Securing data masking and scrambling, anonymization, ongoing operational maintenance, predictive analytics to tie it all together through SNP Crystal Bridge. So I'd like to thank everybody for their attendance and attention. Have a great, great rest of the show. Special thanks for Martha for coming up here and listening to me talk for 20 minutes. Uh, I could go on for hours, but she's not going to let me. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody, again. And please feel free to come over there, and we'll continue the discussion. Thank you, Martha. Thank, thank you, you so Thank much. you, Steele. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.